The ability to fuse weapons in Age of Calamity to create powerful custom variants is one of the most interesting and important mechanics in the game. A mastery of the system will have you putting together some of the craziest weapon combos, but considering just how deep the system is, through gaining weapon XP, to combining seals that buff them further, to even unlocking hidden ones, figuring out the exact ins and outs of how fusing and seals works often takes a lot longer than it needs to when going in blind. So since the game doesn't really explain this well, I thought I would put together a complete guide of everything you need to know about weapon fusing in this game, including all the tips and stats associated with this entire system. Whether you are just getting into this game or are already fairly seasoned, there will be no more wasting time and resources trying to figure this all out, as I've got you covered. And yes, the video will be 100% spoiler free just to let you all know. So without further delay, here is how weapon fusing works in Age of Calamity. Before we get into the complexities, the most important thing everyone should know about this system is the most efficient ways you can level up a weapon in this game. You could just keep slapping unneeded weapons onto better ones to enhance them like most starters do, but the XP gain is going to start getting so minuscule while the cost is going to start skyrocketing like crazy, so please avoid this. Instead, fusing is always best done when you wait to acquire a weapon that has a fusion material up seal, which increases the experience gain for all the items added on to it, along with the experience to a weapon when used as a fusing ingredient itself. So instead of applying all your unused weapons to the things you ultimately want to upgrade, first apply all your unwanted ones to the fusion material up weapon to get a much greater effect, then apply that weapon to the one you want to upgrade for a huge enhancement. By doing it this way, you can easily double, triple, or even quadruple the efficiency of upgrading your weapons by cutting down the amounts you need to upgrade by a drastic amount, all thanks to one handy seal. It's even possible to upgrade a weapon straight from 1 to 20 with a single fuse this way, which is the base max level you can upgrade to in this game. The only exception is if you're running out of space and you still want to make upgrading progress, then it's understandable to fuse together some of your weak weapons to the stronger ones to at least get something, as it's still far more effective than the shabby base selling price. Also, I thought it was worth mentioning that the amount of XP you get when fusing mainly depends on the weapon type, as something like a light skill trident will give more XP than a Zora Spear, but also total damage output plays a small role in XP gain too. Although this shouldn't change the method of fusing stuff together, I just thought it would be an important detail to keep in mind, especially if you want to keep fusion costs low while maximizing the effect. But now that we know how to upgrade weapons, what exactly does this all affect? Well obviously, the damage will go up, usually by 1 or 2 points depending on your weapon, but more importantly, the higher level a weapon level you have, the more seals you can put on it, which are randomly obtained buffs on weapons you can use to customize and enhance your weapon significantly. The first seal slot unlocks at level 1, the second unlocks at level 5, third at level 10, and fourth at level 20, with an additional 2 secret ones we'll discuss later. But considering the vast amount of different seals in this game, it's quite daunting to remember them all. But luckily, they can all be broken down into four distinct categories, represented by their symbol's shape. First, the star-shaped ones are the ones I like to call the damage seals, and involves buffs that directly affect damage output. Regular attack damage, mid-air attack damage, dash attack damage, and basically anything else that affects raw, unconditional damage output are what makes up these buffs. The second are the hexagon buffs, which fit under what I like to call the health category, and nearly all have relation to improving or the state of your current health. Buffs like increased healing item drop rates or healing item effectiveness are good for tanky character builds, while other buffs like increased damage while at full hearts are used to incentivize the increase in life. Next are the circle buffs, which fall under what I like to call the looter category, which generally help with things useful outside of direct combat and battles, such as increased material drop rates across many sources, enhanced experience point gain, and even the super important fusion material gain one we discussed earlier. And lastly, which is by far the most unique category, are the square buffs, which I like to call the danger category, as these seals are helpful for characters who have a more brute, dangerous playstyle. The main seal drastically increases damage output while at low hearts, and this can be paired with other seals like increased attack range or even increased flurry rush timing to push the odds of survival slightly more in your favor. I'll have a full list of all the seals listed here, and also in the description if you'd like to check them all out. 
But in terms of what's really the best, it does depend a lot on playstyle and what you think will be the best for you. But there definitely are some clear choices to aim for depending on your character. Like how mid-air attack damage is super good for a character like Revali since he spends a lot of time in the air. Or you may prefer a lot of special charge up rates for Mifa, considering her special gives her bonus grace hearts as well that you can take advantage of for tankier builds. The only other thing you should know about seals in this game is that almost all of them come in three different levels of potency. Tier 1s which look normal, Tier 2s which has 1+, plus, and Tier 3 which has 2 pluses. Along with the strong yellow seals that you probably saw earlier, which only have one unique tier. Normals are very weak and are basically all you'll find in the very early game. But the further you play, you'll start finding the tier 2s with increasing odds, and then much later you'll start finding the tier 3s as well. And the effectiveness between all these tiers is by quite a huge margin, as something like a monster part drop rate is only a mere 5%, but a tier 2 is 9%, and a tier 3 is all the way to 13%. So given the super low buffs of the tier 1 seals, it's best to just use all the weapons with these seals as fuel to upgrade the other weapons. And then when your upgraded weapon has all of its open slots, transfer the tier 2 or 3 seals you've been saving by fusing them over to your main weapon. Weapon fusing just really isn't worth it if you're trying to get the weak tier 1 seals on a weapon as it'll barely have an effect in battles. So at this point in the tutorial, you should really keep 3 main things in mind. 1. Always fuse all your tier 1 seal and low damage weapons to the ones with fusion material up for the most effect. 2. Fuse those weapons to the powerful ones you actually want to upgrade, which will level it up dramatically to unlock a lot of the seal slots. And 3. Once you have all the slots, fuse all the tier 2 and 3 seal weapons to it to get all the best seals for the best combinations. This is going to be the general loop of how you should be upgrading and creating your custom weapons in the game, but there is one more thing you can and should do to squeeze even more effectiveness out of them, which involves the seal type. Remember how I mentioned that all seals are split into four distinct categories signified by shape? As you've probably noticed, this isn't just for organizational purposes, as having two of one type on a weapon will make them slightly more powerful, usually by a 1 percentile margin, and you can have multiple pairs of different seals to get this buff out of both of them. On top of this, you can get special damage increases on your weapon depending on how many pair combinations of seals that are on there. After getting one pair, you'll get 5 extra damage added, a 4 of a kind will get you a bonus 10 on top of that, and having a different pair from the 4 of a kind will get you an additional 5 points, maxing all the way to 20. But wait, how exactly do you get more than 4 seals in the first place? Well, although the level cap for weapons is 20 at the start, eventually you'll unlock the ability to push a weapon all the way to 30, and when this happens, you'll get 2 more seals for your weapon, one at 25 and one at 30. But unlike the customizable seal slots, the seals that you get here are predetermined for every single character in the game. Like how Mifa's light skill trident will always have a square special charge rate at 25, and a square shockwave seal at 30. It's nice when the two hidden buffs are of the same suit, because you can have basically any 4 before this and still get the max potential. But sometimes hidden buffs will be two different ones, like how Arvali's bow has a star mid attack damage for 25, and a square shockwave for 30. In this case, just make sure that at least 3 of your customizable seals matches one of the two shapes, and the other matches the remainder one to get the full effect out of everything. However, since the hidden seals are completely hidden for each weapon and character, I'll provide a link to the spreadsheet that has all the seal combinations for each character and weapon I have so far, that I'll keep updating once I find out more, so you can start building your weapons as efficiently as possible from the start. But ultimately, all the information we went over should help you guys get a much better grasp of this system, so you can start fusing and creating your most favorable weapon combinations as efficiently as possible. And with all of this said, thank you all so so much for watching the video. This technically marks the first episode in our Stats of the Calamity series, although I'm hoping future videos will deal more with the specific stats and numbers, assuming I can get my hands on the formula coding to this game. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed, and feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe here for more informative Age of Calamity and even Breath of the Wild content to come. A huge huge shout out to my amazing YouTube members for helping to support the channel. If you would like to help me out here like all these amazing people, a link to that will be in the description. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon, bye bye!